They haven't done anything yet. What are you guys all standing for? Before I give my address, though, there's a special couple with us here today. And I'd just like to say thank you to Wayne and Diane Wood for coming to the annual meeting, coming to the lunch, watching the new president give his address. Some people might be very uncomfortable with that. Wayne, I'm not. I feel very honored in having you and Diane front and center. Thank you for coming. Well, here I am. You know, I can't believe a full year has gone by since I first addressed you as a new elected president at last year's annual meeting. First off, I would like to thank each of you for your support, your guidance, and efforts that you put forward in this first year on my behalf. From the board of directors, staffers, regional representatives, county administrative managers, county leadership, and the 45,000 farmers throughout this state. Thank you very much. And let's not forget our guests from the state capitol. Governor Snyder has been no average friend of agriculture. He's been a close, trusted friend to our industry and our organization for five great years now. Governor Snyder's administration has really raised the bar in supporting Michigan agriculture, and he deserves all of our heartfelt thanks and appreciation. You know, I might be at the top of the organizational chart, but I realize it's your hard work that really gets things accomplished. What you have accomplished since we last came together is what, is what makes me, Farm Bureau, proud. We brag a lot about our grassroots policy development process, and rightfully so. Farm Bureau members know that involvement in this organization is not a once a year event. You have such passion and conviction that when you're done writing the policy, you just don't stop there. You stay active year round and you make our voice heard. Over the past year, while I was transitioning into this new role and trying really hard to get better at this public speaking thing, you were out there getting stuff done. Some examples of that. First, you took part in Farm Bureau events in droves. More than 1,000 of you from every county Farm Bureau attended a statewide event. More than 200 of you attended the Voice of Agriculture Conference. We had more than 300 at our Lansing Legislative Seminar. We had almost 300 at our Young Farmers Leaders Conference. We had 42 at our inaugural President's Capital Summit. And we had 114 for our Connect for the Future Forum. Well, that's enough numbers from now. I could, I could throw out many more. But Farm Bureau involvement goes way beyond just showing up at a conference. What else did you do this year? You secured a more stable funding stream for MEEP. So Michigan farmers can stay at the forefront of environmental stewardship. You kept the heat on the EPA, demanding that they go back to the drawing board and retool the ridiculous waters of the US rule. You kept moving forward to find a funding solution for the transportation issue, which 
we finally have accomplished. And instead of complaining about how each H2A cannot work for agriculture, you, you made it possible for us to do something about the lack of seasonal labor. In lieu of real immigration reform, we're making H2A work for our farmers through the efforts of the Great Lakes Ag Labor Services. And finally, just a couple of months ago, your organization sent a group of members overseas as part of our latest international study mission. We do one of these every few years to get a handful of members a peek at how agriculture works in other parts of the world. And it gives us a better perspective on where Michigan fits into the global marketplace. This latest trip across northern Germany and into Belgium was a little different. This time we were joined by nine members from the Indiana Farm Bureau. And believe me, it added an extra dimension that I know our members really appreciated. We have three of our Indiana friends with here today. They are Kyle Klein, Harold Parker, and Phil Ramsey. If you would please stand and accept our appreciation for joining us on that trip. You know, I can, be, I can believe you can be proud of what you, your organization has accomplished this year. Michigan Farm Bureau has a rich history of accomplishments. The active members of today who've helped accomplish all these great things aren't all that different from the active members who's helped this organization achieve similar goals for almost 100 years now. In the 1990s, you took on land use pressures with innovative farmland preservation strategies. In the 1980s, you developed Michigan's landmark Right to Farm Act. And ever since then, it's been a model other states across the country have studied and copied. In the 1970s, we saw the birth of the environmental movement. So you circled the wagons around farming itself and you helped preserve our livelihood and you helped preserve our way of, way of life with the creation of PA 116. In the 1960s, you helped rewrite Michigan State's Constitution, safeguarding farmers' interests at every step of the way. Do you see a pattern in all of that? You, the rank and file Farm Bureau member, you rise to every challenge our industry faces and you come out on top. You have defended our farming practices. You protect the environment that we all depend on. You help preserve the land and the industry itself. You assert the authority of Michigan agriculture. You are its muscle, its brain, its bones, its heart, and its soul. And today, we want to recognize those of you who've been at it the longest. Today, we salute the longest serving members of this organization. Those who have seen Michigan Farm Bureau through all these challenges and many more over the past five or more decades. Now, I'm asking all of you to take a look at your name tag. Go ahead, take a look at it, and see where it says how many years you've been a Farm Bureau member. If that number is 50 or more, I want you to stand up and be recognized for serving this organization and for serving Michigan agriculture.
stay, stay standing, stay standing. Stay standing and let us humble newbies thank you for your leadership, your achievements, and for the sterling example that you set for all of us. These are very special people we recognize here today. Throughout the week here, don't hesitate to stop and thank them personally. They've been the backbone of this organization for at least half a century. Thank you all. Now, I'm probably stretching our timeline here, but I want to wrap up on a more personal note. This Thursday will mark the one-year anniversary of my election to lead this organization as your president. The past 12 months have been eye-opening for sure, perhaps even a little blurry at times. But I'm humble and grateful for all the support and encouragement I've gotten from our County Farm Bureau presidents and the members like you all across this state. But most importantly, there's my family. You can't get around this basic fact. This position I'm in now takes a farmer off his farm. And trust me, that can be tough. Yes, I'm surrounded by support at home office and everywhere I go around the state, including the state capitol, even in D.C. But none of that's possible without the support, love, and encouragement I have back home. My wife, Lisa, and our sons, CJ, Nathan, and Michael, they're the ones who really make it possible for me to take the wheel of this great organization. They are the most important people in my life, hands down. Thank you. And now, I'm out of time, but I want to thank you all for being here. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your patience. As I said, I'm not public speaking's greatest fan, but I'm working on it. And I'd like to thank you for all the work you've done over the years that has made this organization what it is today. And Thank you for the work you're here to do this week. You, the members, are the heart and soul of this organization, and I'm proud to serve you. So now, let's get to work. We got a lot of stuff to do. Thank you.